Hi, everyone. I hope you've had an amazing weekend. What a time to be alive, just to um, partner with what God is doing in the world. And I just sense such a convergence of so many things right now. And we're all being tested in ways, literally, we've never been tested before. And uh, I just want to say from the beginning of this week, um, Johnny and I are still very much uh, standing in a place of faith. If you've not had an opportunity to read a short um, post that Johnny put on our Facebook, uh, I think it was Saturday morning, but about the fragrance of faith and just the rare opportunity that we have to just bless our Father with the fragrance of faith. Um, you'll want to read that. It's very encouraging. And I just love it too, how Johnny's been getting people to give feedback um, in the comments. He's asking very specific questions and getting some very specific feedback, thousands of comments. And they're all so encouraging because what we're hearing is that um, many of you are, are being found in a place of faith too. And again, this always connects back to the greatest thing of all, which is the knowledge of the glory of God filling the earth. And it can't fill the earth until it first floods our own soul, our own heart. And um, when you know who someone is, you just can't be convinced that they're someone else. And we know who our father is, and we can't be convinced that he's someone else, that he's an unjust uh, judge that he is far away and, and not involved in the affairs of men, um, that his kingdom is something that is just going to kind of fade away until Jesus comes and just swoops us and rescues us. Yeah, Jesus is returning, but he's returning for a bride who hasn't wavered in who she knows um, God to be. And well, I'll say we all waver. Let me just say that. We all waver. That That's not the issue. It's where um, you choose to stand anyway, even in your wavering, even in the doubts that you have. So everybody has doubts. All right. I'm going to jump in here. This week, I hear the Father calling us surrendered ones. We are ones who are surrendered, fully surrendered to him. And I'm going to break that down for you in a minute as to what that actually means to me. Um, first, I want to take us to Luke 15, 11 through 31. This is the story that Jesus told of the prodigal. And I'm going to just get through this as fast as I can, because um, I really am wanting to, to um, honor the time that I originally told you at the beginning of the year, the 15 minutes. I'll see how I can do this morning. Um, the prodigal, I believe, is more of a story about revealing the father to us than revealing uh, a prodigal. And we're all familiar with the prodigal. The prodigal is in every one of us. We've all, um, you know, left the our father in some ways. There's parts of us that wander. Um, but what what we need to grow in is our understanding of our father. And this story that Jesus told was in response to the religious ones of his day, the um, Pharisees, asking him or blaming him, wow, this is a man who is friends with sinners. He even eats with sinners. That's what they said at the beginning of, the, of that chapter. And so Jesus goes on to tell a couple stories in response to that accusation. Um, and... I believe his response, again, was everything that his life was always about, which is, I'm going to show you God the Father in a way you've never seen him before. Some people say that this story was a common story that people would tell back then, specifically the Pharisees, and they had a different ending. Their ending was um, the father wasn't nice. The father had to not let the son back in, not let him come back home. And it was an I told you so kind of moment. Um 
one thing that the Lord showed me in, in this story is that no child, not one of us is born a blank slate. If you have more than one kid, then you know that. Um, nobody's born blank. They don't turn out the same. They all make their own decisions because of this thing called free will. And, um, and our free will too. You know, we grow as parents and we parent them a little differently along the way. No child is born blank, but here's the point of that. The father alone knows the process that it will take to bring surrender and eternal intimacy with God for each one of us. So he trusts us, those that have prodigals, he trusts us with prodigals and collectively he trusts us with a prodigal generation. Uh, I believe we, we have a prodigal generation like never before. And this is something that God trusts us with. Um, so this idea of we're not born blank, if you think about it, um, that's encouraging for parents who are, maybe you've got little ones right now and you're like, they're each so different and I don't know about how to raise them. And, um, you know, certain kids, uh, seem to buck against the system more than others. And, and the Lord spoke to me in recent years and said, I want you to know that each, I gave you each of your kids because I knew that you would love them the way they needed to be loved through their process. I trust you with my children and they're all in different processes at different times, different seasons. And our opportunity becomes uh, to love them unconditionally right where they are especially as they become adults and you're, you're done with the parenting part per se. And what they really need is, is um, a reflection of the father's heart to them, which is just love. Um, I'm not trying to tell you don't use tough love and all that. I'm not, this is not a parenting conversation. This is about our father. So Jesus told us uh, three things that I think are really important in this story. Number one, this was in response to the religious accusations. So this gives us permission to love people right where they are. Okay. Cause Jesus did. Why would a sinner want to eat with Jesus in a meal if they didn't feel loved and accepted by him? Number two, Jesus told us this story to show us the father's heart. And number three, to help us learn how to position ourselves differently than the brother did in this story, the brother that stayed home. So we have the advantage that the brother in the story that stayed home didn't have. The story ends with him upset, not understanding why the father is celebrating the son who left and then came back when he'd been there all along and done the right thing, performed properly for daddy. And so um, this gives us an understanding that the, the character in the story didn't have, which is we get to see the father's heart and be um, invited to position ourselves next to the father. So in this story, I don't think that we are the father. The father is always the father, our, our heavenly father. Um, but we are a brother and we have the opportunity to know the heart of our father, the father of prodigals, and position ourselves with the father as he is <clears throat> uh loving and helping the prodigal prodigal generation process. So an important thing to think about here is the father, I, I said this a couple of days ago, but the father actually financed the rebellion. He made the rebellion possible in the son, the prodigal. And for our purposes here, um, I believe that, that the inheritance that the son asked for, that he got before he was ready for it, was the same, uh, similar to the same gift that God has given every one of us. Our inheritance is free will. For all of eternity, we will have the opportunity to freely choose intimacy with our Father. But we're in this earthly experience to help position our spirit in a posture of surrendering our free will to Him for all of eternity. So that when we are birthed into eternity, we're birthed into heaven, we are forever postured in that 
that surrendering of our free will, that gift that, that God gave us. So the son gets his uh, inheritance before he was ready, the same way that as humanity, we've been given free will that we weren't ready for. Now, another important thing about this um, parable is that the father, our father, isn't, wasn't a victim. He waits full of hopeful anticipation and unconditional love. He stood in the most powerful position of all, which is the supernatural force of love. We've talked a lot about love. Love is not just a squishy little thing. It's not a spiritual concept. It is the essence and core of what makes God God. And this supernatural force of love, like a magnet and a beacon of truth, pulled the son back home. The father knew when he gave him his inheritance, when he financed his rebellion or made his rebellion possible, he knew that the son would come to the end of himself and that he would follow his, his, his desire for what is real and authentic, which was the love that he felt in his father's house um, in the form of provision. He would follow it back to its source where he knew it had always been even if it meant he'd take a lesser role. So um, the father wasn't a victim. He waited like a magnet and a beacon of truth that pulled the son home. The prodigal, it tells us in the, in the parable that the prodigal joined himself to a citizen of another, um, another country or whatever. And so the prodigal, this prodigal generation that we, we are in the midst of, has joined itself to something, someone, somewhere they don't belong. It's not their real home. And it led to no provision. The things that, that he needed to sustain himself, it became empty. And he came to the end of them, excuse me, he came to the end of himself. And he said, I will arise, I will go back home to my father, and I will say that I've sinned against heaven and you. And I want to declare that we are looking at a generation right now and we need to be ready for them. We need to be at the end of the road waiting with the Father. We are looking at a generation right now that will make the Jesus movement pale in comparison. It is a generation of prodigals and they are about to arise, go back home to the Father, and they will say that they have sinned against heaven and against the Father, and it will be a genuine, most incredible, true repentance, not shame, but true conviction, the kind that brings celebration, that brings joy. And we wanna be in the position next to the Father, not where the son, uh, the other son was. So the Father was, clearly waiting and looking. If he hadn't have been, how would he have seen, if he hadn't been anticipating the, the prodigal to come home, how would he have known to see him coming from afar? And it says he, he saw him from afar, he had compassion on him, he ran, he gave him hugs, he kissed him, he, he gave him back his full authority immediately. He celebrated, he, he was extravagant, with his love for him. He was radical with his love for him. This is the heart of our father. When we get it wrong and we wrongly use our free will, the father waits not as a victim of our wrong choices, our wrong use of our inheritance, but he waits in the most powerful position of all and he welcomes us back with compassion. This is what he is inviting us into. There, this is what we need to foster and stir up in our hearts right now towards those that are even, you know, falling away um, from the faith because they're so um, convinced that, that, that God is afar off. You know, we have levels and degrees of, of prodigal perspective. The father um, celebrated by fully restoring him to the position of a son. The older son was angry and jealous of the celebration. So um, we have the understanding that the older brother didn't 
we can wait with the Father. We can posture our hearts the same way the Father postured his. Rebellion is simply this. It's not surrendering your right to independence. We do have a right to be independent, to be self-sufficient. We have that right. We can, we can run with that right. We have the right to do things our way. God gave us that right. And we can respect that right that someone else has as long as it's not hurting someone else. And so it's a tricky pro, uh, posture that we, that we find ourselves in, allowing someone uh, to do what they want to with the gift that God has given, given us. So one of the greatest gifts that God has ever given us is our free will. And what will we do with that gift? Um, there's another, another parable about the profitable servant in Matthew 25, and it shows us the difference between a victim and a powerful person. A victim focuses on the choices others made or make that affect them. A powerful person focuses on the choices they can make that affect others. So the profitable servant in that parable basically didn't hide their talents. They risked their talent. They risked the gift that was given them to produce more. So there's a level of risk that we take when we lay down our own free will, our own um, ability to figure something out apart from bringing God into the equation. And it is a time like never before to surrender that gift of free will that God gave us and to lean heavily into the Holy Spirit for discernment, to believe, standing in faith in what we cannot see, but what the Spirit of God resonates with in us, what He affirms in our spirit that, that is contradictory oftentimes to what we see. It can feel really risky, um, but this is what pleases the Father. So, um, Let's pray. Father, I thank you for being a father to the prodigals. Many of us have been prodigals. Thank you for being a prodigal to a prodigal generation and for the invitation to wait at the end of the road with you and to posture our hearts in that place of unconditional love that is um, not a victim of other people's choices. That we rise up above all of the ways that um, people have let us down or that people have made choices that have uh, produced certain consequences in our nations. We rise up above all of that and we look and see through your eyes, Father. And we want to position our hearts not as victims, but as, um, as powerful people because you are a powerful God. And what is connected to you um, can be sourced in everything that that is you and so we we connect ourselves to that 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 powerful source of love that is a magnet and a beacon of truth uh, that brings sons and daughters back home and we surrender once again to you father we lay our will down and we want to do it your way we want to see through your eyes and we want to respond the way you respond you are the only judge. You are the only one who can judge us because you're the only one who knows all that needs to be known to fairly judge. And so we choose to lay down our right, our opinion, our judgment of others. And we bind ourselves to your heart as the father of prodigals. And we wait with you in anticipation of what you will do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so your song, we actually have two songs for you today. They're both short, but they really just um, cause an encounter together, and they're right in the zone of what we've been talking about today. And they're both by Jason Upton. The first one, I recommend them in this order. The first one is God Finds Us and Then Home to Me. God Finds Us and Then Home to Me. I think at least one of those is not on um, like Apple Music um, 
but they're both on YouTube. So I know you can find them both on YouTube. There, there's some new ones from him. At least one of them is new. Um, I also recommend that you listen to them twice. If you have time, listen to them twice. The first time, listen for yourself. Just use them as an opportunity to just go deeper into the father's heart, the father of prodigals and how much he loves us and how our home is in him. And then listen a second time, but listen as, um, listen for the prodigals, allow it to stir in your heart, the heart of the father for prodigals that are about to come home and allow it to just tweak your heart in alignment with, with the father who is waiting at the end of the road. Um, I will tell you very quickly, if you have not joined our email list, I would encourage you to do so. We have an email that we want to send out um, tomorrow that it's something that we can't put online because we would most certainly be knocked off um, uh, our, our social media platforms. So it's something we want to email to you and uh, you know you won't get it if you're not on the email list. When you go to our website and you subscribe, it gives you the opportunity to get a free download for a course called Hearing God. If you don't want the course, um, just, just go ahead and still give the email address, but you can just ignore the email that sends you the course. You don't have to go through the course. You can just delete that email, but it is a really good course, actually, and it's a good time to uh, learn about Hearing God. Um, another quick thing is, I am starting um, in one week on next Monday, a 21 day uh, weight loss and nutrition fitness challenge. And uh, our daughter Grace's boyfriend, Clay Marinas, um, who has already become like a son to us, we just adore him. He is um, a nutrition and fitness coach. He is really good at what he does. He has a, just a sweet, sweet spirit, pure hearted young man. And um, he does individual coaching, but I asked him to do a group coaching on a private Facebook group with me so that anyone of you that wanted to join me, it's for men and women, um, whether you need to lose weight or not, it doesn't matter. If you just want to just reconnect yourself to your commitment to make good choices, healthy habits, um, fitness and or nutrition, um, it's going to be a group thing that we're going to go through together. It is $99. I am trying to help this young man. Um, he's he's a, a student at Bethel School of Ministry right now and will be graduating soon. And um, so we really want to help him take off in, in this area of passion that he has. And so I'm excited to make this available to you. It's not available yet. Um, we're going to send an email out about that in the next couple of days as well. Um, and so I'll remind you here about it, but uh, have an awesome day. Have, uh, have some time with the Lord. It's, a, it's an important time to really stay um, connected to Him, to stay filled so that there's no room for fear. When you get that just time of just letting Him love on you, literally just three minutes can make the difference. Letting Him love on you then you're not going to respond and react out of fear because you're going to be in that place of, of knowing how loved you are and you'll be able to give it away too. So love you guys and see you tomorrow.